All right. How does that sound? Is that any better? Yes. Okay. Way better. Awesome. Way better. Perfect. Um, thanks for telling me. I was on a different system over the weekend and haven't been on, had to talk a whole bunch on this system yet this week. So thanks for letting me know. Now we're going to play the game Spot It. Now that you can hear me, I'm going to hold the two cards and you're going to find like items on each card. And when you see it, you're going to yell it out. Picnic table. Yay. Now we're going to get on a roll. I'm going to keep admitting people because it takes um, a while for people to get on. Oh, I see it. Are those biking bags? A backpack. Yep. We'll give everybody like 30 more seconds and then we'll get rolling. Boot, yeah. So if you're just joining, we're playing a good old fashioned game of spot it. You yell out if you see an item that is the same on both cards. They might be Moon. a different size. All right. Mushroom. <laughs> awesome. Fish. Fish. Okay, last one. Log. Log. Okay. So thanks for humoring me. It's always funny when everybody's signing in. I welcome everybody to our webinar tonight. Um, my name is Suzanne Stone, and I am the Chief Program Delivery Officer here in uh, with 4-H Alberta. And um, tonight we're going to talk about everything Cleaver Kids. So as you notice that when you signed on, um, the session will be recorded. And I just shared my screen. So I hope um, everyone can see that. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So like I said, um, this is our last one of our virtual leader series. Um, each of our provincial advisory committees have led one over the end of October into November, as well as our communications committee. And this one is everything Cleaver Kids. Um, so to start off, um, I would like to you to introduce the program staff. So if you were to ever reach out in the chat, I did put our email address at programs 4 h at 4hab.com. You will either get myself, um, Tracy Dietrich, who focuses on uh, leader development and project related items. And then Sydney Welsh is new to our team and she will be leading summer programs and youth development like our youth leaders and our ambassadors. Tonight, we're going to cover on what the heck Cleaver Kids are, um, skill development, 4-H clubs and their Cleaver Kids, what their participation looks like at club level, what participation looks like at district and regional levels, the things you need to know, and then we'll uh, go over a few activities and do some sharing and open the floor for questions. So if you do have any questions, you can write them in the chat. Um, I don't see it right now, so I will look periodically and then I'll come back to it. So first off, we'll talk about what Cleaver Kids are. And I think looking at the list, most everybody um, that registered has an affiliation with Cleaver Kids of some sort. So they either have Cleaver Kids, they're leading Cleaver Kids, or they are interested in um, what Cleaver Kids are all about. So they are six to eight years old. Um, this program, when it started back in 2009, it seems like a long time ago, a lot of those first year Cleaver Kids are graduating college <laughs> um, now. And that's really exciting that they were part of our first pilot and there was about 60 of them in that year is um, feedback from the pilot stages and then over the years is Cleaver Kids is designed 
to be creative and you to be able to set your pathway for your club that best suits the needs for the abilities of the cleaver kid as well as their families um also cleaver kids um they're part of our program so we can foster skill development we're going to prepare them to be those awesome 4-h junior members that go on to be senior members who are becoming ambassadors and then eventually leaders in our program as well fingers crossed um cleaver kids we also uh part of their club is we're going to provide them age appropriate activities that are standalone learning activities and we will talk about that um in a little bit um cleaver kids are also a transition and uh it is very progressive through the 4-h program so as they're joining as cleaver kids this six to age eight age category they're so eager they're so enthusiastic and they're super high energy so we want to make sure that we harness that keep that and help them transition into a confident junior member that um, can succeed in the 4-h program through progressive learning and then um, also cleaver kids is all about learning every day can be totally different and um, you have to be a little bit flexible in order for them to learn. Um, we want them to be engaged and interested in what they're doing, the activities that they're taking part in. Um, a big one that's capitalized there is um, Cleaver Kids have a ton of fun. So this age group, like I said, that high energy just results in a ton of fun. Um, sometimes maybe a little bit chaos, um, but that is what makes it fun at your club level as well. Um, one nice thing about Cleaver Kids is you can involve the family. Um, you Sometimes our Cleaver Kids are brand new to the 4-H program, and we want to encourage that family participation of a parent or guardian. So they too are learning about what it means to be in 4-H, what does 4-H have to offer as their child gets older? Um, there are four areas of, of focus that the Cleaver Kids focus on. So as I'm going through these, I want you to put your five fingers up because there's five requirements that 4-H members participate in. And I want you to visualize the relationship between um, these four areas of focus and those member requirements. So developing new friendships is number one. We want friendships between Cleaver Kid to Cleaver Kid, Cleaver Kids to members, Cleaver Kids to um, caring adults, uh, which are their leaders, uh, fellow parents, we would like um, parents to also develop those friendships so 4-H becomes the place where they wanna be. They feel the most comfortable. They walk in and everybody knows their name. So developing new friendships is um, can happen at every time you meet. Um, if they meet new people or um, through that club connection. The next one is creating a sense of belonging to the club in the community. So um, this one, if you've guessed it, it relates to community service. We want the Cleaver Kids to be part of the club. So they're not a group that has to be excluded all the time. So they come along and you scoot them off and they're excluded. We want them to be part of the club. We want to, them to learn about what it is to be part of 4-H, um, what does a club meeting look like that may be a modified version, and then also be part of the community as well. So Cleaver Kids, um, the ones I know are sometimes the hardest workers when you're at those community dinners and they're cleaning up plates and visiting with people or welcoming folks at the door at an event. So make sure that they're part of the club uh, activities as well as um, their community service in an age appropriate capacity. So they only can handle so much for so long, but they definitely can be involved. Number three is developing listening skills and the ability to express themselves. So which one does this relate to? 
you don't have to say it, but I'm guessing you guys are all thinking the communication requirement. This is where we start to build the confidence um, and the understanding that communication activity isn't as scary as it may look for a first year nine year old coming into the club. So there are activities that you can do as a group where they can listen and uh, also express themselves in a small group atmosphere and building them up to be able to be successful when they have to do the communication requirement. Number four is kind of three and one, but they all fit together, is uh, learning to set goals. So as a group, as a small group of Cleaver kids, or even with your club leadership, you should set goals. What do you want to accomplish throughout your 4-H year? And I always recommend that four goals for 4-H um, is wonderful. You can follow the 4-Hs um, or not. One of those goals could be fun. And if you ever feel lost, you always circle back to those goals. So if you set one goal uh, is working on these areas of skill development mentioned above, you could say, oh, we developed a whole bunch of new friendships. We were out in the community, so we got that goal. Another one is hands-on learning. So did we incorporate hands-on age-appropriate learning for the Cleaver kids this year? That would be a checkbox for that goal. Um, a third goal would be exploring 4-H. Were we able to provide exposure and opportunity for the Cleaver kids to learn about 4-H? Um, and then the fourth goal could be just having fun. So every time you meet, you circle back to those goals and uh, look at, did we focus on developing some skills? Did we do something that's hands-on? Did we learn about 4-H and did we have fun? Uh, and that really helps you communicate the expectations of your club plan with your fellow leaders. Um, tracking that progress, uh, when we talk about resources, I'll tell you where you can do that and uh, or you just track it at a club level to make sure you're meeting your goals and then also celebrating achievements. So that can be part of your club achievement day. That could be every time you meet, um, whatever meets the needs of your club. Uh, the next one is when your club is starting your uh, Cleaver Kid venture or at the beginning of the year. I know they're not check boxes and they're kind of distorted on my screen. Um, but here's a quick checklist that you can refer back to is that you want to review the requirements of having Cleaver Kids in your club. So the four areas of skill development, review the leader guide, any 4-H Alberta policy or not policy um, guidelines in our reference guide. Uh, you want to be familiar with that. You're going to draft your program plan. Uh, and that can include these are the resources that we have or I'm looking to do this activity, but it might cost a little bit more. So how do you develop that into your plan? Uh, you want to make sure your club is voting on having the Cleaver Kids as part of your club. Uh, this one, a lot of the Cleaver Kids over the years have been grandfathered in. We take ages 6 to 20 in our club um, and that's okay. It is similar to agreeing on having an additional project in your club. So you wanna make sure you have the leader volunteers to support Cleaver Kids as well as maybe even financial resources as well. So make sure your club uh, understands that and they understand the program plan as well because it will differ from what your junior intermediate and senior members are doing. At a club level, you want to elect a Cleaver Kid leader. So our uh, overarching 4-H Alberta rule is that you always need to follow the rule of two. And I'm just gonna check my waiting room. Sorry. Um, you always wanna follow the rule of two. And you also need 
a cleaver kid leader designated to those cleaver kids one for every five so if you have three kids you still need those two people um if you have five kids you need the two people if you get over five you need to add another cleaver kid leader to your roster and the for the reason for that is because these are six to eight years old eight years old um youngsters and this age group their skill development differs so much from being six to eight there's six-year-olds that can read write cut jump skip there are eight-year-olds that struggle with using scissors or something like that so adding that leader ratio in there is really important to make sure that your cleaver kids are coming and enjoying their time and be able to uh, participate in all the activities. Communicate your plan through with the club, not throughout the club. Um, you should share it with the club saying these are our goals. This is the activities that our club is going to be part of, uh, particularly your leadership team of your club to make sure that when community service is being planned, the Cleaver kids are part of that. When Achievement Day is being planned, Cleaver kids are part of that. Um, you wanna register your Cleaver kids just like the rest of your members and your leaders in the online registration system. It's important to evaluate as you go. Uh, your kids, your Cleaver kids are your best um, litmus test. So you ask them, if they're having fun with the activities, is there something else they would like to do? Maybe you've done an activity that's related to science and technology and they want to do more. So is there a way you can alter that or work that in to the rest of your club plan? Um, and the final thing on the checklist is definitely have some fun. So making sure that your yourself um, is having fun and your Cleaver kids are having fun as well. Okay. I'm gonna loop back and check that uh, waiting room. Sorry to those folks that were sitting there for a few minutes. Uh, the next information is around resources that are available. Um, we have leader resources. And the first thing is, this has been around for a little while because you'll notice that that's the old clover, but the information in it is still um, very uh, relevant and it guides you to work through how do you work with cleaver kids, what are some skill development areas that six to eight year olds have. Um, it helps you kind of map out your club plan. This document is downloadable on our 4-H website. Um, the next one is a quick reference guide. So that one's multiple pages and this one is four and it's called the Cleaver Kids Quick Reference Guide. Kind of looks like that. It's also on our 4-H website and it covers everything that I'm talking about right now in point form, what you can do, what you can't do, um, and things that you need to know. Uh, 4-H Canada learns, if you are part of that, if you've done your commit to kids, you have a login, um, and on there, there are a ton of resources. We call our 68 year olds Cleaver kids because of this guy behind me, Cleaver the Beaver and um, other provinces refer to their six to eight year olds as clover buds so there are some resources on 4-h learns um, i'll guide you to the ontario one if you're looking for project related activities for six to eight year olds ontario has some pretty thick little manuals uh, you don't have to print the whole thing but you can go through and say i want to do this activity and those resources are for you to use. 4-H Alberta YouTube channel. Uh, we have a couple uh, Cleaver Kid uh, webinars on there from years gone by that you can check out. Uh, but through COVID, is, we did some learning sessions that were geared to the leadership development pillars, science and technology, community, um, 
and communications, sustainable agriculture and food security, as well as environment and healthy living. And those activities were open for all ages. So there's ice cream making, there are birdhouse and bee house condo building. There's some really good resources on the YouTube channel. Um, other leaders are the best um, because everybody has um, developed some activities or ran activities. They have experience of what uh, works and what doesn't work. And so connecting with leaders such as you guys on this call are a great resource and Googling for fun ideas that are age appropriate for the members, for the Cleaver Kids. Uh, Cleaver Kid resources. Um, these items can be ordered in the Staples ePrint site at the time your club orders all their club supplies. So there's a Cleaver Kids activity book. Um, and those activities in there are broke into those um, learning pillars that I just mentioned. They're generally out of recycled material or things that you have around your home so that you can reduce your cost for your club and your your cleaver kid families um there is a sprouts egg for life guide uh in the ePrint site this isn't the exact one this was from last year and it has egg related activities in it great photos and pictures there is a year end oh the folder to hold all the papers you give your cleaver kids so it's just a open folder with two pockets they can write their name on it their club and hold all the papers that you give them there is a year end certificate and a silver seal they only could be a cleaver kid for three years so they're spot for three years um so if they're a first year cleaver, they only get one of these and then you order the silver seals after that. And a membership card, which I don't have on my desk at the moment, but it is just like the junior intermediate senior members. So all of those can be found on the ePrint site and your general leader or club registrar can order those. Uh, these resources except for the egg for life sprout guide can be also found like the leader guide and the quick reference guide can be found on the website um, under the cleaver kids tab egg for life has been a great partner with us they've been providing that sprouts book for us for a few years now it's always been different but go to their website because they have so many downloadable egg related resources and activities crafts for all seasons and um, all budgets as well. There's some great resources on the Egg for Life uh, website. Uh, this page just kind of shows what they look like, um, but I held those up as well. <clears throat> the next slide is a lot of writing. Um, I won't read it to you. It is in the quick reference guide, but there's a few things that I want to point out here. Um, is these are areas that you might want to discuss with your club and what this looks like for your Cleaver Kid group. So Cleaver Kids can participate in fundraising initiatives. That means community dinners, if your club is hosting one, tire recycling, um, cookbook sales, whatever that might be that supports the club, ticket 50-50s. Uh, Cleaver Kids cannot um, gain profit from any of the personal items or animals or mini projects. So they shouldn't be selling their um, uh, craft items that they have produced for personal profit. But if your Cleaver Kid group wants to make um, Christmas centerpieces and sell them as a club fundraiser, that is um, fine to do so. 
Cleaver Kid activities will be tracked at club level. Um, this is an area we're working on, but we're not quite there yet. So the years of tender or tenure are not utilized or counted in the yearly diaries at this point um, or for scholarship purposes. They can be mentioned in there um, because they were part of 4-H one or three years as a Cleaver Kid for sure, but um, there is no spot for them in the diaries at this point. A uh, decision to involve Cleaver Kids at a district or a regional level is the sole discretion of that district or region. Um, some districts and regions across the province have welcomed their Cleaver Kid to specific events like curling nights or fun days, um, but they limit their participation when it comes to a competition or something like that. So if you see something you think that this would be great for our Cleaver kids to participate in, provide that proposal in advance, not the day before the event, but in advance to the district or region and let them discuss it and just be advised that um, their decision must be respected. And there might be different factors why they say no. Um, people resources might be one, financial resources might be one, um, timing might be another one, but it's always good to come with a plan and say how you're going to support that activity at a district or a regional event if you want your Cleaver kids to participate. Um, this one here, uh, and I know there'll be questions about it at the end, so I would like to definitely field those questions, is Cleaver kids do not take part in traditional 4-H projects. So they're able to explore everything 4-H has to offer. We'll talk about livestock related items on the next slide. Um, they don't take the per traditional project because there are requirements to go along with taking a 4-H project, such as keeping a record book for each of your projects, um, completing the member requirements and uh, showcasing them at Achievement Day. So they can explore those activities because we want them to do that. We want them to try a whole bunch of things so they know what they want to do when they become nine, uh, what project they want to take, but they don't have to take on the full traditional project. Um, speaking of that, they can participate in livestock activities and events. Uh, safety must be in the number one priority and um, advancing all 4-H, or when advancing into 4-H, the project policies, it should be guidelines in our reference guide, must be followed. Um, all activities with these livestock must be standalone, focusing on fund development, fundamentals and safety. When it's defined as standalone activities or events is that um, if they're going to take uh, a calendar year, calf, dairy, animal, sheep, or um, lamb, or um, a, a pig, a swine, um, they need to be participating with those animals in their own class. So we're not going to put them in with the juniors because they will need extra supervision and attention. They will need extra support to make sure that that activity is um, successful for them. So that's what standalone means. That means they could participate in Achievement Day, but they have their own class. They can participate in clinics, but they have their own area. They have their own arena time, if you want to call it for the equine folks. Um, the market type animals is a calendar year animal so that's january 1st of the club year so if you're taking on an animal this year it has to be born after january 1st 2024 um, in order to participate with cleaver kids no breeding or market animal can be used as a cleaver kid mini project so that means like your market steer um, your heifer so they need to be a calendar year animal. And Cleaver kids, unfortunately, if they're in there for three years, they might be building a flock 
or a herd, they do not start as a junior member with a flock or a herd. Uh, they would be starting just like any other junior member uh, would be if they joined when they're nine. For equine related activities, um, Cleaver Kids may ride uh, this a skill and age appropriate horse at the club's discretion. They must be in a standalone activity or event. So they aren't put with the juniors, even though maybe there's a Cleaver kid that can ride better than a junior and intermediate. They have to be Cleaver kids with Cleaver kids. Um, and that will affect your day plan because you need to make some time for them. They do need to have their Cleaver kid leader present as well as maybe an instructor that can support their learning. Cleaver kids are not assessed in the equine 4-H project levels until they're a junior member. Uh, they can focus on the fundamentals of horsemanship and safety, but they do not start with any level assessments because that is for um, older members. And of course, helmets must be worn in all riding activities. So I'm going to pause there for a second um, before I show you some fun activities and uh, photos that I've collected to see if there's any questions. You can unmute yourself and, or you can write it in the chat um, of the things that we have spoke about. There was a lot of information and I feel like I talked really fast, <laughs> but I wanted to share that and have an opportunity to have sharing with you guys. Uh, Ricky, do you have your hand up? I do. I have a couple questions, actually. Yeah. Um, one being on. I partly understand why the kids can't have market projects, but I, what I don't understand is how in other provinces they're able to have a market project in, you know, whether it's a market steer or a yearling heifer and compete. You know, maybe it is their own group, but they're able to, to have that project. Why is it that Alberta is the only area that's not? Great question. Uh, um, and hopefully I can answer that for you. When we went through the pilot stages of this program, it was actually in pilot stages for about five years, we did seek um, feedback from our 4-H community and folks. Uh, the first few years of the pilot, cleavers were able to have that market animal they could have anything and the feedback from our leaders felt that the cleaver kids were not quite ready to fulfill all the requirements that come along with having a market steer or an equine project and that's where that was developed from was from leader feedback we understand that there are breed associations that allow the little guys like there's some out there that i'm not even oh sure. every breed association they can yeah. show if they're two if they wanted to yeah absolutely um and that's we want our cleaver kids to focus on those four areas of a skill development and there is time for the project talking with some of those pro those other provinces they didn't have that pilot stage um they incorporated them in and they do have requirements and guidelines that those younger guys have to follow mm -hmm. i'm not 100 percent familiar with those ones but i do know other provinces allow it um with alberta through that pilot stage and as this program has grown we do focus on those friendships, the the fundamentals of 4-H yeah. interest. Or, okay. I know it's not ideal because there is kids that are doing it anyway. Um, well, and it actually puts our kids at a disadvantage when they go to compete at other shows at that younger level. And even when they get into the junior level because they don't have that experience in the show ring that the kids do in other provinces. I will Especially on the that. beef level. That I, that topic does need to be talked about again. So I'm going to make a note of that because um, we do have our provincial advisory committee committees. So our yeah. beef advisory, equine, sheep, um, and they do talk about this periodically. And yeah. um, I'm going to bring it forward to their 
meetings in the next year. So I'll pass that yeah. on. Yeah, them. no, I appreciate that because, yeah. you know, um, you know, they say safety is another part of it too, but I don't hundred percent buy that just being that I would be way more comfortable with my eight-year-old um, working with a project that they've worked with for the whole year versus, excuse me, grabbing a baby calf and <laughs> who knows what that's like, unless it's been done properly. Mm -hmm. So. so I will, I will take that because they, they should revisit that and try yeah. to put it again um, and seek some feedback from our leaders for sure. Okay. Now the other question that I had, um, was our Cleaver members able to compete or is it just everybody wins, everybody gets a ribbon? Um, you, your club can des design that. Um, it is hard when we're talking about livestock to judge uh, calendar your calf in a confirmation class because you might have a jersey you might have a january baby you might have a march baby um, but if you wanted to do showmanship grooming um, posters stall decorations if your club can design that that everybody understands that expectation that those components are competition type things um, you're free to do that and um, we want to make sure that that show ring is a positive place. So the judges oh, absolutely. spend time with each of those kids and stuff. But your club can design that for sure. Okay. No, yeah. I appreciate that because there's a lot to learn from a kid being able to start to compete and understand what they need to do to achieve to be better and excel to that next level versus just, hey, we're here. <laughs> yeah. Sure, we had fun, but how do we get better? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Suzanne, uh, Bertha Casbolm here, just a comment. Um, I think Cleaver kids are to be uh, joined as fun and not push so hard because by the time they can become 10 and 11, they're gonna be enough is enough. And that's where we're losing our kids. We want them to stay on. So I really feel that they should be having fun rather than a competition and leave the competition to later years. Thanks, Bertha, for that comment. Um, and a lot of clubs do follow that. So, uh, but if you wanted to do the competition, you definitely could. And as long as it is a positive experience, so they're not burnt out or they're feeling a ton of pressure before they become nine, because when they become nine, they actually add on uh, communications and the record book and a few more requirements to get ready for achievement day. So it is, that's why we have those areas of skill development. Um, and they are focused on fun and learning. Thanks, Bertha. Suzanne, you've got a question in your chat room. I'm not sure if you're following. Oh, yep. Yeah. So if in equine, can cleavers ride at one end of the arena? and the other club members ride at the other end. So with, that's a great question because I know arena time is precious um, because you pay by the hour or you only have so much time to um, be at the arena. As long as that's a standalone event and they can have the supervision um, in that end and be able to be uh, provided safety fundamentals um, all of the risks have been diminished because if you have a group of members that are riding young horses on the other end things happen you are dealing with livestock it is recommended that they have that space to themselves if you can clearly make um an area for them that they have the appropriate supervision and um, leadership and instruction, they can ride at one end. So you would have to block that off with um, some type of barrier because these little guys need visuals um, and sometimes the older ones as well. Yeah. So the next question is why can't the kids sell their projects for profit? Are there legal issues? How can we change that? Um, Again, it goes back to, we want them to focus on having the fun and being able to 
do things themselves. So hands-on learning, explore 4-H without it becoming something, oh, I have to make 20 bracelets to be able to sell this for profit. But if they do this as a group um, and use it as a fundraiser, that is okay. Um, we don't want to put the pressure on them that they need to sell something. There are um, challenges with resources so funding some families do not have the means to be able to um, buy the supplies to create something that they're going to sell um, that's why it is geared towards the um, club level fundraising instead um, what about livestock projects on that note no they cannot sell their livestock projects are they able to rail them no because that's a traditional 4-H um, project. So in order to do that, they need to be completing those member requirements. But like if it wasn't sold through the 4-H sale? Um, you can sell that, but you cannot use the 4-H name. It goes back to the beef standards. Um, you can't use the 4-H name um, in that process. Just be sold as the kids, like through the kid personally yeah. at the auction market yeah johnny raised this animal um but it wouldn't be considered 4-h beef there is a line yeah. i don't have that in front of me but there is a line in the beef standards that talks about that yeah no that's fine thanks for the clarity um is there a way that our cleaver group can showcase the charity steer at achievement day um they can get the older members to lead but take responsibility for caring for the steer over the two days you bet um that isn't this is allowed because that isn't their own sole project, right? They're not making profit off of that one steer for themselves. They're learning um, safety, go back to the safety. Safety is number one. Um, they don't have, each of them don't have a charity steer. So it needs to be um, that they're doing it as a group. From time to time, when they're learning grooming, they are grooming on um, that charity animal or a heifer, but they're doing it as a group. They just don't have that individual project. Um, could a cleaver kid raise the charity steer with the help of the club? Um, need a little more information about that one because um, if it is at their place and it is their buddy calf to a sibling's calf, that might be a possibility. They could look after it. Um, that would be homework, you could say, is things that happen at home. And then the cleaver kids do it as a group, but it wouldn't be one individual cleaver kid raising that steer because that would be considered a project. Can I ask a quick question? Yep, I was just gonna um, go to the hands. <laughs> okay, sir. Uh, so um, I guess just to clarify, my interpretation and our club's interpretation of the cleavers is just that it's our job for however long they're with us to teach them as much as possible about 4-H and about the different projects that they could go into once they become nine years old. So. Um, I'm just, cause I'm like really lost here. Why we're showing cow cattle and stuff like that. Like I get that, that they want the experience and stuff, but I'm just want to make sure that I'm on the right track here. Like I'm exposing my kids to small pets and sewing and woodworking and, and equine, but we're not focusing on anything. Is that like, am I off? <laughs> like, I feel like I'm no. lost here. You are right on. Um, okay. Your name's Nikki because that's what it says on the screen. You're yes. right on because we focus on those four areas of skill development. And as I flip through these next little photos, you we want these cleaver kids to explore as much as 4-H as possible. Where it gets to the calendar year animal and the equine, sometimes these cleaver kids are a part of clubs that do not offer anything else and um so those are just the limitations when they can explore those type of projects um there is limitations behind them does that make sense 
Absolutely, there does. And we're yeah. one of those clubs, too, that do not have 4-HB, 4-Equine. However, we do have them in surrounding towns, like close to us. So mm -hmm. that's why we still want to branch out to make sure that they fully understand all of 4-H and all that 4-H has to offer. So, okay, I just wanted to make sure that we're on, I'm on the right page here. You you definitely are on the right page um, because often members, we just, this is down a rabbit hole, but we just held a program called Project in a Weekend. And it was a very small program, but it was super successful and has so much potential. And it was for senior members, but it exposed those members to projects that aren't offered in their club. So by taking these cleaver kids and letting them taste canine, taste crafts, taste foods, um, we find their interest. And 4-H is all about, we want that hands-on learning, um, being able to learn in a positive environment. And if they want to take on foods and they're in um, a club that doesn't offer it, that helps grow opportunities for those members in that club as well. And we'll go back to the first slide when we talk about family engagement. So if those Cleaver kids have interest in food and they become nine, maybe there, there's a parent that has never been a 4-H volunteer or leader before that puts up their hand and said, well, I'll lead that project because we had so much fun doing that as a group of Cleaver kids. And that just helps grow your club and the opportunities that your club offers. Explore 4-H, it is a, I didn't mention that on the resource page, but we do have a, a resource manual that would have some great activities to assist with that. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to flip through these here because I'm conscious of time and I do want to have a little bit of sharing. These are some photos that have come in from various clubs. You might recognize some of your kids in there if you've sent them into our fund development. So it's a group of Cleaver kids playing games. Um, kind of looks like it's in a kitchen, but um, I'm hoping they were part of a little bit of the meeting and then they went and done their uh, own activity. The little guy in the middle is working on a Christmas ornament. Um, the kids on th my right with the ponies, that was a community service activity that they um, took miniature ponies to a senior's home and the Cleaver kids were a part of that. Um, and that wasn't even a horse club. That was somebody had mini ponies and they brought that in. Um, fun activities is uh, the top one is a new activity that is in that Cleaver kid activity box or pack. It's about growing your socks. So Cleaver kids can go plant their socks and see how they are going to decompose, what they're going to grow, um, dirty socks, clean socks, whatever it is. So it is exploring um, different avenues or through activities. Uh, the kids in the middle made a fun little craft um, that they showcased. The picture on the right is a full club activity where Cleaver kids, it looks like they're partnered with older members to do some minute to win it challenges. The activities along the bottom, you can explore various um, projects or through just that simple paper train or paper chain. Um, that's a dog. You can put a horse face on that. You can put um, a cow face, whatever you want to put on there. And then the picture in the middle is these young girls uh, were exploring breeds of horses through crafts. Um, that comes from a club that they're a horse club, but their kids do not ride. Um, they all focus on dismounted skills, learning theory type things through hands-on fun activities. And they were little horse ornaments and they had photos of different colors and breeds and they painted those horses accordingly. And I don't know what they're going to do with them, but hang them on a Christmas tree maybe or in their room. Uh, the next one are also activities in that activity book that's provided through the resources. The top one is an old stock photo. We do have that with the new logo in it. It's um, kind of a, a cleaver that you put together with pins. 
and that activity you talk about the pledge so when you're coloring cleaver's head what does it mean head to clear thinking and you work through the pledge with your members with that activity heart is his body what does it mean to have heart in 4-h to develop those positive values um, and then he's got legs and a tail too and you can pin them together and he kind of moves uh, the picture in the middle with the heart uh, is from recycled material it's wax paper and it's um, jar lids that i'm sure everybody on this call has a million in their house and they use canola oil so you can spin that and talk about canola oil, canola oil if you wish um, because you soak the photo that they colored with canola oil and it becomes a sun catcher um, the photo on the right is a good old christmas wreath out of recycled material um, the photo on the bottom, I actually physically have those, are tiles from um, a used store, and they've colored them with Sharpie markers, that one says 4-H, and then they've sprayed them with whiteboard spray to meld the, the photo on it. And it kind of blends it together. That one's blent. I think that's supposed to be hands. <laughs> and here's a heart. Uh, the photo on the bottom left is um, a rubber bone science experiment. So you have a bone that's very hard and you put it in household products like vinegar. And pretty soon that bone is really flexible and rubbery. Um, as a science experiment. This is where you can explore 4-H um, is talk about the animals, simple activities. It could be paper trains. The bottom is a cooking activity. Um, the one in the middle is exploring canine. And the one on the far right is a little bit blurry. I apologize for that, is that they made farms for their club um, or what an animal needs if they were to have one. Um, and then I have some things behind me that I will also show you. Oh, I brought the horses. They come to me. These little horses, they come from the dollar store, which were super fun. Um, and they painted them in various colors. Uh, Halloween is uh, kind of recycled material. That's just a marker um and then some raffia this activity is totally recycled um it's a napkin this watermelon is a napkin uh from a mason jar and some and some twine i guess it is and they modge podged one layer of the napkin on the jar and put a tea light in there This one is super fun. This is one of the original activities when cleavers come to be. A lot of clubs were doing this is they made a clover out of members hands. And this was done by a six year old. I have it in my office because I think it's so cute. And they wrote head, heart, health and hands if you can read it. <laughs> And then this one was an eight-year-old with a stencil. They put the logo on um, a canvas from the dollar store and kind of taped it off and then drew the colors on it. So that's a pretty awesome logo, but they did have a stencil that they painted around. Um, and this guy, is a plant holder. Can you see him? <laughs> He's a horse. Um, put a, Suzanne, if you put us on the full screen, we'd be able to see better, I think, oh. rather than shared. Oh, thanks, Bertha. Good thing you're here. How's that? Oh, man. Okay. So this is a plant holder. A plant goes in the box, and they've painted welcome on it. Um, there was a parent that did some woodworking, which was awesome. 
Um, but the kids did the painting and put it together. And the last one that I have to share um, was done by a, a horse club and they were learning different horse disciplines. So again, it's the club that doesn't ride. Uh, so they were learning different disciplines, what they could do with their horse and they built a trail course together. So they learned different elements of a trail course. So the little logs and everything's falling apart, a gate, some poles, and again, out of recycled material. Okay, so that's kind of all I have for you guys. I'll open it for sharing. If you want to run and go get something your Cleaver Kids made to show us on the screen, I would love that. Um, at any time, if you have any feedback, reach out to our programs team. If you have a really fun activity that you did, um, please share that with us. We can add it in our activity book. Uh, if you need some ideas, reach out to our team as well and um, let us know. Does anybody wanna share something? Corrine, I know your house is full of Cleaver Kid activities. <laughs> So in our club, our um, cleavers, they um, they make their snack as part of um, of every meeting. And it's always something healthy, but it's fun. So it could be um, like we did a, a segment on fat and uh, how it keeps you can keep you warm. And we talked about polar bears. And so they made a, a polar bear snack out of um, out of yogurt and bananas for the um, for the eyes and the ears, et cetera. So they got to make these polar bear faces. But at every meeting, they make a recipe card so they can take it home and they can make it again at home. Oh, that's awesome. They collect them. That's fun. Yeah, last year we did quite a few activities. We kind of do the like, a monthly meeting for our cleavers so you know how like crafts will get together once a month and cooking well we had that exact same thing for our cleavers and in uh, november we had a farm safety thing so everyone came out to our farm and we talked about farm safety and then had hot chocolate and cookies afterwards and then the next month we did uh garden gnomes um but they're like those like um use tomato cages and they put uh spruce twigs all over it and put a hat on it and they brought their own hats so we tried to keep our costs down I had 17 kids last year and we had about $200 budget so it's possible and then January we used the egg for life uh, beef books and we talked all about beef and how they have four stomachs and just lots of stuff about cattle and then February we did cupcake decorating uh, so I had a whole bunch of different pipe bags so they could try out different ways to decorate cupcakes and then we also made uh, cards for the seniors and then handed them into um, the lodge in town and just gave them to the seniors. That was really nice. It's kind of like a community involvement thing too. Um, and then March was just a leprechaun trap, just being creative, bringing materials and creating something that they could use at home for catching a leprechaun. And April, we had an outdoor, our club also has an outdoor living uh, project. So we had the lady that's the leader from there to come out and talk fire safety and show the kids how to make fire and just, just different survival tips. So of course, like one of those topics was free, like we didn't have any expenses with it. And then in May, we actually did our achievement day boards. So everyone came together. I had all the different things they could have done throughout the year. Cut, um, print it off. So they just cut whichever activities they participated in, put it on their cleaver board. And then at their achievement day, everyone had a board and it was already pre-made. They didn't have to do it at home with their families. We just all did it together. So it was kind of, yeah, but we're in a different club this year and we're only beef now. So I'm not sure that threw a whole new wrench into being the cleaver leader. So that's why it's great to hear everyone's um, ideas. I do have a question about sheep. Sure. Um, 
Are they allowed to have their own sheep? Someone told me that they have to show someone else's sheep as a cleaver project. How does that they, work? They can have their own lamb. Um, sheep are born later mm -hmm. in the year, so it has to be born in that time. And they can have their own lamb. They wouldn't be marketing that for sale, though. Okay, so they can have their own lamb. They just don't sell it and they bring it home again, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Right. Thank you. That's our club is a beef project we but we've opened it up to lamb as well just to help increase numbers for members and um it's been a huge asset and we actually encourage if the the kids do want to have a project to have a lamb project because it's something that is easy it's a short period of time they can really learn the the skills of you know husbandry health feeding and it's all usually fair weather for them to work on versus a a calf when it's a lot different and it's it's actually been really fun to see the kids excel with their projects um at achievement day when they show it Let's see if i can hold on i got blurred background here <laughs> right here that's all our little cleavers last year at achievement day with all their projects oh that's awesome yeah and they were so proud because they did it themselves they were able to do it on their own and um, yeah, it's been really great. So with ours, for some of our cleaver activities, we, um, we've talked about feeds and feeding different feeds of which are safe to feed to ruminants, which are not, um, different byproducts. Um, for Remembrance Day, we did, I don't know if you can see that. It's hard when I got my screen mute. No, hold on. Um, <laughs> the kids did a, a Remembrance Day thing and, they built wreaths and then took them to a different couple different community things. So it was just used out of old egg cartons and they were oh, so awesome. proud to take it with and deliver it to their, the couple local businesses. So that was something that we did in November. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, there is around Remembrance Day, um, there's some great resources. I have it on my mess of my desk here um, through the Canadian armed forces and they talk about the animals in war they talk about um a whole bunch of different things and they have dot to dots and mazes and things like that are that are geared right to remembrance day so that might complement your wreaths next year megan do you want to tell us how you made those keychains because those are very intriguing I didn't really want to use the actual name for them. So there's this craft paper called shrinky dink paper. <laughs> okay. that, yeah. So I called it shrink paper. Anyhow. Um, so I printed off um, just a picture of the 4-H clover and the kids chased it. And it was, it was about half the size of just a normal piece of paper. So they chased it and then they colored it and, and decorated it how they wanted it. And then we hole punched where the keychain goes through. And then you just, we took them into, we have our meetings at a school and they have a kitchen area. So we took them in there and they got to watch them shrink in the oven. You put them in the oven for about two to three minutes at, I want to say like 300, but I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And they get to watch it shrink. And then, yeah, they got to take it home. Some made them for their teachers. Um, some made them for our leader of the club as well. Oh, that's awesome. That's funny. That's a great science and technology activity. Why do you think it shrinks? How small do you think it's going to get? It's that um, estimating what's going to happen. Yeah, I like that. I'll share another quick one that we did and it a little bit cost more, but it was kind of a gift that the kids could use or give away. We made a couple years ago, we did taco, homemade taco seasoning. And then last year we did like a mocha mix and a um, friendship tea or whatever. So we make a whole bunch of them. We have like 13 cleavers, so it's lots. Um, so we made a bunch and half of them, we went uh, work with another group that does gift bags for some of the condos at the um, lodge in town. So it goes in their little Christmas basket you know, compliments of the um, 4-H cleavers. And then they each get to take one or two home that they can give as a gift or um, to their teacher or something. And they oh, have fun. Everybody fun. takes a station adding the <laughs> adding the mix in and 
It's great it mess. It's great fun. Yeah. That sounds yes. like an awesome mess. It is. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, well, uh, in the Cleaver Kid activity book on the back page, I don't have one printed on my desk to show you, but there are prizes to be won with your Cleaver Kids. So if you're doing the activities in there, the sun catchers, the rubber bone, the, the tiles, which I'll show you again because I was little on the screen. Um, if you take a picture and send that in, uh, we do do some prizes throughout the year for Cleaver Kids Clubs. And those could be resources for your kids. They're usually like craft items that can go and be reused from time to time. So be sure to check those out. Is there any other questions or anybody else that wants to share? I'm going to just share my screen one more time because we have some great sponsors that help us um, with Cleaver Kids in the province uh, our, to keep our membership down and to develop some resources and be able to print them for our kids. So our um, Cleaver Kids sponsor in this session was brought to you by a Gold Clover sponsor, AFSC and a bronze clover sponsor, Viterra. So if you ever run into any of those folks, definitely thank them for sponsoring uh, Cleaver Kids for 4-H in Alberta. And um, our general sponsors that sponsor our entire program, an Emerald Clover sponsor, Alberta Recycling, Elta Link, ATB, Calgary Stampede Foundation, CPA Foundation, UFA, and our major diamond clover sponsor that we can't do this program without is our partnership with the Alberta government. So if you run into any of those businesses or have any interactions with them, please make sure you say thank you to them because they we can't do it without them. Um, I will stay on for a little bit. If you have any other questions um, for me, but uh, unless anybody else wants to share or ask a question to the group, that wraps up our meeting for the night. Um, and I just really encourage you, if you have questions or would like to see some more of these, give us some ideas and we will do our best to uh, make it happen. Is there a group, like I know there's on Facebook, there's some different groups of sharing stuff, but is there something that is a, you know, a cleaver form something or other to try and you know bounce some of these ideas off or get connected with other leaders because that you know unless you know other communities or groups that have them you don't really know who to who to reach out to um i'm gonna make a note of that too thank you for that because years ago we used to have a cleaver kid facebook page um it's kind of gone to the wayside but i'm going to see if we can connect it to our 4-h alberta page to have that conversation um able to ask questions. There are quite a few groups that different leaders have started for 4-H in general that have some great ideas or uh, have leaders that can, that have some experience that can answer some questions as well. So I'm going to write that one down too. Thanks for that. And I guess I'm full of questions tonight. <laughs> okay. Do some of the other clubs, like, what do they charge for a membership fee or what are they, like, I know the one gal, she mentioned that they only had like a $200 budget. Um, but I guess it really depends on the number that you're working with. But what is, um, you know, what do some clubs charge for a membership fee for their Cleaver members? That's a great question. Does anybody want to put that in the chat or... Um talk about that thirty dollars thirty dollars provincial um is there any fees on top of that that you're charging your cleaver kids hey ricky uh our club does 30 extra dollars for each cleaver kid just at a club level just to help offset some of the smaller costs that we have so it'd be 60 bucks total for a cleaver 
Yeah, we bumped ours up to 50 this year just because they do get a lot out of <laughs> out of the program. Yeah. But not much investment. Exactly. Awesome. That's a great question um, and good information to have for sure. Can um, I? Um, oh. oh, go ahead. Sorry, but no, if you're going to continue with that topic, go ahead. I was just going to reply to Megan something. Oh, the in the chat. Speaking? I was going to yeah. go to the public speaking one. Oh, sorry. So what so what I have done with our um, group of kids is we do penny for your thoughts. And so every time we meet, I bring in like chocolate coins. And so I give them a topic that they know of beforehand. Um, so the first time we met, it was like, your favorite bring something like your favorite stuff or your, your favorite toy or whatever and then they stand up and they say hi my name is so and so and this is you know my favorite whatever and then after they're done they just say thanks for listening is there any questions and so it gets everybody involved and it kind of makes it like a show and tell safe environment for them because they're still young and they really like getting paid with chocolate coins for having to speak so it's it is a highlight with my kids and like this time when we meet on Sunday it's going to be their their um what they're talking about is what's something on their wish list for Christmas. And I feel like when you make the topics that are very easily relatable to them, it's very easy for them to talk to their peers and they don't feel as uh, stressed out, I guess it would be. And then I've noticed those cleavers from, from being in cleavers last year that have moved into being a member um, and doing projects. They are freely joining in at the meetings and really in being engaged and participating because they don't have the same fear. It wasn't such a big thing for them from the beginning. So anyway, that's just what we do. Um, and there's great feedback from the kids and everybody. So just a suggestion. That's fantastic, Nikki. Thank you for sharing. Um, clubs are kind of all over the place based on what their members are ready for or what their cleaver kids are uh, are ready for um i've observed that there are cleaver kids that can't say their name during roll call at the beginning of the year but are actually answering the roll call question at the end because of those fun little activities um that you can do is um, sometimes I bring a, a sack of random items that I've cleaned off my counter of my children. So there's like a shoe, a hat, a skate, like, you know, the things that collect on your counter in your kitchen and you bring that and they go in there and they pull something out and they have to tell a funny story about this skate that they pulled out or a spatula or something like that. And any little activity like that builds so much confidence with six to eight year olds um they don't have to get up and do a speech it isn't a requirement of cleaver kids the skill development area is um, listening skills and ability to express themselves so going back to the penny for your thoughts with nikki she's probably teaching those other kids to listen to the person that's telling them about their favorite stuffed animal or what they want for christmas um, to be able to go to a public speaking event and listen to the other members. Um, from time to time, you might have a cleaver that says, I'm ready. I have a speech. I wrote it. Um, you don't want to stifle that enthusiasm, um, but they will need some support if you do that. Um, and they don't have to be in that competitive um, public speaking environment. We just want them to build their skills and be that confident nine-year-old the first year. They we actually did that. We had a handful of Cleaver members that were keen and wanted to give a speech. So they we had like two of them. Um, so they gave their speech. But the other ones, um, as part of the time fillers when the judges were writing comments and stuff, we had the kids go, get up and give jokes um, just as time fillers. And they would go up and, you know, groups of three or four. And they had a hoot. And the audience just loved some of the jokes that they came up with. And you can really see some of the personalities of kids with it too. Yes, for sure. It's all about that building confidence. Um, I'm gonna check the chat one last time. Um, let's 
story cubes for Cleaver speaking. Those are great. Um, those of you who joined in and we were playing a game, spot it is the best thing for communication. It gets rowdy, but it gets the kids like saying it and they don't even know they're public speaking when they're yelling out tent or dragon or whatever is on the spot it card. Um, those shy kids, you see maybe their competitive nature coming out. Um, it is a really fun game, but if you have a shy group, it's a great kind of icebreaker that also is communication. We also have, um, well, we have what are called cleaver bucks. And so if we, we have a, we always have an exercise component to our, um, to our meeting with the cleavers. And so if somebody, if one of the kids decide that they want to lead one of those exercises, they can get some cleaver bucks and then the cleaver bucks, they can um, cash in um, for something from our tickle trunk, which is it, it's erasers, pencils, um, tops, just yo-yos, just fun little things. Yeah, fun. Um, I was reading the last comment in there is that the Cleaver program has basically been non-existent. Um, thank you for rejuvenating that. And if don't worry about the no budget thing. If you talk to Corrine that was speaking earlier, she had a $200 budget. Um, the clubs that my kids are part of, everything's recycled, like everything. It's coming from, you know, that random tub of crafts <laughs> and then you get creative from it. Um, so there is a way to start um, with a low budget for sure. I guess I have one more question. Um, how, how, if maybe if other leaders can answer this, how, when you guys meet like once a month with your cleavers, what's the time period that you're meeting for? Is it like an hour? Is it two? Just out of curiosity. Super. Anybody want to share that? Well, in our club, we start with the um, rest of the group and so that they get part of the meeting. And then we go off into a room um, by ourselves while the rest of the group finishes. So we have usually about an hour to, um, depending on, on what's happening, some, the longest we've ever had is an hour and a half, but I would say generally it's an hour. It's the attention span of your kids um, and what, so some clubs are doing what Jane Ellen said. So they're learning about the meeting, they're joining for the pledge, the roll call, and then they go and do their activity if you have the facility to be able to do that. Um, Cause them sitting through a meeting is going to be quite challenging, uh, especially if your meeting is quite long. And then when it comes to project type days, they have those activities with their cleaver leader. And you just have to look at the capacity of your volunteer are they able to keep these kids busy for two hours if something, if they have to, right? What is in your planning? Generally an hour of energy and activities at a time is um, with then a break. Maybe they have a, a, a wellness break, snack, run around for a bit before you gain their attention again. So it, that one really varies on your Cleaver kids' abilities as well and their attention spans because <laughs> it differs so much between eight, six and eight. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Um, this here, we did record this session. Uh, so you can reference back. It'll be a little while before we get it up on YouTube, but that's where it will be. And um, once it's up on YouTube, we'll send everybody that participated or registered for the, uh, the session the link to review it on YouTube. But thank you very much for joining us. And um, have fun with the Cleaver Kids because it is the most creative and the most fun um, introducing a whole bunch of six, year, six to eight-year-olds to 4-H.